Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and do an example of our one sample hypothesis testing. So let's suppose that you own a gas station. And if people spend more than 80 seconds on average uh, at the pump, you can sell TV ad space. You got like a little TV um, at the pump and you can sell ad space uh, to you know, wh whoever wants to buy an advertisement. Uh, but it's got to be on average greater than 80 seconds before you can start selling the ad space. So if you, and you only want to make a type one error 5% of the time. Okay, so let's start off at the top and let's kind of just work our way down through our steps and see if we can't make it make our way through this hypothesis testing. So first things first, our data type that we have, what are we actually measuring? Well, what we are going to be measuring is time. We're going to be measuring seconds so we know that we have numerical data. All right, so we've got numerical data. Number two, our population and our parameter. Okay, so we only have like our one gas station or maybe we own gas stations. Maybe that's probably better. We'll say that we own multiple gas stations. Uh, and our population, let's put this right here, pop, is going to be average time, or is, is going to be uh, the population are going to be people at your pumps, right? Because that's who we're actually measuring. We're going to be measuring people at your pumps. We'll do all people using your pumps. And then the parameter that we're interested in is going to be mu of the true mean time at pump. Okay, great. Assumptions. Okay, so our assumptions are going to really be boiled down to how we're going to take our sample. Is it going to be a good sample or a bad sample? And are we going to meet the central limit theorem? Okay. So suppose that like I have no idea how much time people are going to spend at a pump. So I don't think it's going to be a good idea to say that it's normally distributed because I could see some people spending a ton of time at a pump, uh, like you know a trucker or somebody who has you know just a huge gas tank, versus like a motorcycle who shows up and just spends a couple of seconds filling up a tiny gas tank. Uh, so I don't know how these are distributed. So I don't think I can just like assume that it's normally distributed. So if I can't do that, uh, I can invoke the central limit theorem. So when we do this, let's say that we take a sample size of 40 randomly selected um, people at pumps. And we, you know, take a stopwatch and we measure how long that, that they stay there. All right, so randomly selected, we're trying to get a representative sample of our population. Uh, and uh, we have a 40, so we can invoke the central limit theorem. And since we can invoke the central limit theorem, we say that the sampling distribution is going to be normal. Uh, so we are good to go. So I'm just going to put a check mark by this. Okay, so next we want to state our hypotheses. So we're going to say that the null hypothesis is that the true mean is going to be equal to our hypothesized mean of 80 seconds. And our alternative hypothesis is that mu is actually greater than 80 seconds. All right, so we've got our null. Remember, our alternative is whatever we want to be able to claim. If we want to be able to claim that it's greater than 80 seconds, then the null hypothesis is just going to be, well, that it's equal to 80 seconds. Okay, so our alpha, it was actually given to us in the problem. It says I want to make this type 1 error only 5% of the time. So our alpha is going to be 0.05. 
All right, next, we've got to figure out like what method are we going to be using? And so far, um, we only know two different types. So I'm actually going to write down both of these guys so that we can look at them real quick, and then I'll erase one out. So when we are doing our hypothesis testing, we've got two methods uh, when we are dealing with means. So we can either use the t method. So we could say that t equals our x bar minus mu naught divided by s divided by the square root of n. Or we can use the z method, which is x bar minus mu naught divided by sigma divided by the square root of n. All right, so we have to know what we have actually, like the problem has given us. So I'm going to go through, and I'm actually going to kind of go down and look at the experimental data. Um, well, I, I guess we'll stop here. Our scenario doesn't give us a population standard deviation. So because we don't have a population standard deviation, we can't use this Z method. Uh, it just doesn't work uh, because we have to have that population standard deviation. Since we don't have that population standard deviation, we are going to be going after this T distribution method. So we've got our testing method. So now we need to conduct our experiment and collect data. So suppose you're this gas station and we will go and do some data. So I'm just going to say that we have N equals 40. We have mu naught equals 80. That's the hypothesized mean, and we'll put those in seconds. Uh, we'll put the sample standard deviation is in 30 seconds. Um, we have x bar. What we got from our sample was equal to 90 seconds. Um, and we'll say that that's kind of what we got from our testing. All right, so we went and got it out of our data, and now we need to go through and basically do our test statistic. We actually need to calculate this guy out. So let's kind of plug in some values and see what we wind up getting. So when we do this guy, we can say that that is equal to our x bar, 90 minus 80 divided by 30 divided by the square root of 40. And if you actually calculate this out, this is going to be equal to 2.11. And that is our test statistic. And our p-value, if we plug this in and we use our, uh, and, and we use some of our software, we will find out that our p-value is going to be equal to 0.021. I'll show you how to do this in software on another example, but for right now, I just wanted to get up some values. Okay, so now we've got our p-value. And before we get too much further, let's draw a picture. It's really important to draw a picture to see kind of what is going on uh, just in our brains and with this scenario. Okay, so I'm gonna draw this picture down here. Okay, so what we've got is we've got this guy. We know that at the middle is going to be our hypothesized mean, which is going to be our 80 seconds. And we know that we've gone up like 2.11 right here, and we've got that as our x bar, which is 90. Okay. And we know that we said we are willing to have alpha be 0.05. And we know that we said this is going to be greater than. We think that it's greater than. So we are going to say, well, if we can show that it's at least this much greater than, we will reject the null hypothesis. And what we found, remember with this 90, we found that kind of was our area, kind of that outline in blue. That outline in blue was that 0.021. Oh, 
And if you notice, our sample, our x bar, has fallen inside of the rejection region, which is cool. So we can say that p value, p value is less than alpha. Therefore, those three dots, mathematical for therefore, we are going to reject. Okay, excellent. We have landed in here. We are going to say that we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Now we're down uh, to just writing out our conclusion. So I'm just going to erase just a little bit uh, so that I've got a little bit of room here to write out a, uh, a conclusion. And I'll go over with more practice of all the different ways that we can write these conclusions and because there's, there's a whole bunch of different combinations. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this guy written in. And I'm just going to put the t, the t value over here. So when we do it with APA formatting, t, we also need to include the degrees of freedom, which remember is n minus 1, which is going to be 39. And that equals, once again, that 2.11. OK. So let's go ahead and, uh, and put this kind of in our format that, that we're looking for. So I'm going to put it in, um, in just yeah a, a good example for everybody to use. Let's see, what color should I be using? Let's go ahead and use green. So I can say that we. have collected sufficient sufficient evidence. And then here I'm going to include in parentheses, so this is T39 equals 2.11 P uh, equals 0 0.021 to reject the claim that the true mean time of people spent at our pumps is equal to 80 seconds and instead claim it is more than that. Okay, so for my conclusion, the only thing that I have that I've included in here uh, is uh, that we have rejected the claim that the true mean is equal to 80 seconds. I've rejected our null hypothesis and instead claim that it is more than that, that it is greater than 80 seconds. So our conclusion, that's all that we're saying. But since we've rejected the null hypothesis, remember we need to include our, um, we need to include our confidence interval as well. Uh, the only thing that, I, that we also probably should include in here uh, is our alpha level uh, to basically be able to see uh, what, our, what our alpha level is. Um, I'll check on that though with our, with our APA formatting. Okay, so once we get down to here, we need to include our confidence interval, and we can say that, uh, so when we calculate our confidence interval, remember, we've got to go back and do uh, the same equations that we were using before. So for our confidence interval, this is going to be x bar minus our margin of error. And the reason why I did minus is because we are doing a greater than test. So this is going to be 80, 80, uh, oh, not 80, sorry. This is going to be 90 because x bar was 90. Uh, 
and our margin of error from here wound up being 7.99. Uh, remember the margin of error is equal to our t degrees of freedom alpha, so we have to calculate out that t multiplied by s divided by the square root of n. So I have already plugged those values in and our margin of error that we get was 7.99 and that gave us um, oh, that gave us for our lower bound of 8.82.01 um, yeah so we've got 82.01 for a confidence interval. All right, so coming back here, finishing off our conclusion, we can say that we are 95% confident that the true mean time spent at our pumps is at least 82.01 seconds. Okay, and now this is our entire conclusion for our hypothesis testing if we had rejected the null hypothesis. Anyhow, we'll do more examples. I'll show you more of how to do this, especially with software, uh, because that's how we're going to be calculating out like our t's and our p values and a whole bunch of this is we really do need our software. Uh, but I kind of wanted to go through it step by step uh, on the board as well. So I hope that this uh, helps you out and we'll do more examples in other videos.